We got about four inches of snow last night and I can hardly feel my face out here, so it seems like a perfect time to start a new outdoor project in my uninsulated, unheated shop. I'm gonna start building the bathroom vanity that's gonna go in our future home build. It's a project I've actually done before. I used a Woodsmith magazine and slightly modified some of their plans and we absolutely love how it turned out in the existing bathroom that I built it for a couple years ago. So I'm gonna start cutting all the pieces for that and I'm gonna break in a new chop saw while I'm doing it. Behind me is an Evolution Power Tools R255 SMS Plus. It's a 10 inch sliding single bevel compound miter saw and Evolution reached out to me and asked if I would want to review this in exchange for the saw and I said why the heck not. So they sent me out the saw, the stand, it's going to be handy for this project and in the future and I'm excited to check it out and tell you what I think about it. One of their big selling points is the multi-material blade. They claim it can cut steel, we're going to try that out too. So let's get this thing unboxed, set up and see what it does. It's shipped in a super compact box so some assembly definitely will be required. Setting the stand up took almost no time, maybe five minutes. Evolution is a company that's out of the United Kingdom. They're much more popular across the pond and they are slowly expanding their presence in the US. Putting the saw together was also really easy. Just follow the instructions, maybe took 15 minutes. Well, it looks like the only hiccup I'm gonna hit during installation is a pretty minor one. You're supposed to have four of these short and four longs. I got five shorts and three longs. Those are to hold these brackets for the uh, stand onto the bottom. And I guess I'm just gonna have to make do. There's, the short ones barely catch the threads, but could be worse. I appreciate that it has a cord wrap built in. That's nice for moving it around. Fast forward and we are set up in the shop here and let's get to the first order of business, which is doing all of our cuts. That's really what I'm focusing on tonight and thank you Woodsmith Magazine for laying everything out. I have all my poplar. I'm just gonna go ahead and start cutting these up. First cut and nice job, Alex. Set up a stop block to check the accuracy of the miter and did the picture frame test. It did fairly well overall. I'd give it about 85%. Uh, I do like how the stop block clamp nests nicely behind the saw when not in use. I didn't have a chance to test the bevel. It is just a single bevel saw, 0 to 45. The table on the Evolution is noticeably smaller than what I'm used to working on. However, it didn't seem to really hurt anything. These dust bags are useless on all saws. This one was no different. It was empty after cutting all night. I noticed the multi-material blade has about two or three times the tear out of my 40 tooth cross cutting blade. I would definitely say this blade is mostly for framing and projects where you don't care about tear out. I cross cut a 2x12 just to see if it would do it. I had no issues. Alright, we're going to try cutting some steel. It's a little bit scary. The blade is advertised to cut both steel and aluminum. For steel, there is thickness limits. For example, plate is a maximum of a quarter inch. Well, that didn't seem to do too bad. I wanted to see if the steel would dull the blade, so I did two more passes and then tried the 2x12 again. I didn't notice any issues. This blade would definitely be good for cutting through wood with nails in it. I think the main difference with this multi-material blade are these little rakers that make sure that you can't take too deep a cut and that is what allows it to cut steel. Here's a regular wood blade in comparison. I've gotten quite a bit of cutting done tonight. I have pretty much all of the rough pieces I need cut out for the vanity and I can start shaping them up from here. But I think I'm at least remotely qualified to give my thoughts on this saw if that's the reason you're watching this video to, to learn about it. So here's my honest review. Starting with the pros, it is a small footprint. It's light, it's compact, not including the stand. I would not advise trying to move it attached to the stand like I did. 
It's a little bit awkward and bulky and heavy, but by itself, it's fine. Next, it actually sounds pretty cool. The motor in this thing is not typical, I feel, to uh, many other miter saws that I've ever used before. It sounds really powerful, and it actually is quite powerful. Once this thing gets up to speed, there's not much stopping it, and it is quite a workhorse. I think it's rated as a 15 amp motor, so it's got plenty of power, which is not a bad thing. Next is the laser. Out of the box, the laser is actually pretty accurate. Uh, the weird thing about the laser, though, I guess this is... So we're moving into the cons now is the switch is over on the right side of the handle which is if you're right-handed there's no part of your hand that's over there uh, if you're left-handed sure but most people are right-handed and it should be on the other side just kind of a weird pet peeve I did notice that as the night went on the laser actually lost a bit of accuracy it started off pretty much dead on laser on the left side of the blade finished after the night of cutting about a sixteenth of an inch off not a big deal, it's adjustable, but just, just thought I'd mention it. Something I'm really not a fan of is that the stand is not height adjustable. It's at this fixed height and it's really low. The slide on this saw comes just over my actual workbench height. It's probably about a foot lower than I'm used to working and I wish I could just bring it up higher, but you can't, unfortunately. Another minor complaint about the base is I wish it had wheels just so when the saw was attached to it, you could just pick it up and drag it wherever, just like a wagon. I've seen other bases like that. It's a first world problem, I guess. And then lastly, I think the one biggest thing that could be improved about the saw is the motor startup time. I actually appreciate that it has, has a really soft starting motor. It's one of the features I really like about the Makita that I use, but this takes like five Mississippi seconds to get up to full speed, and that can get a little bit old because if you're making a lot of repetitive cuts, it's just kind of a waste of time, even just a seconds. Here's zero to full speed. In contrast, here's the Makita. So that's really what I had to say about the saw. Overall, I'm glad I have it. It's gonna be a good job site saw. I previously don't have any miter saw for uh, our house build. I, it'll be nice to have one here back in the shop and one on site. So overall, I wouldn't say that this is the, you know, Cadillac of chop saws by any means, but it's definitely better than Harbor Freight, absolutely. And for really 95% of woodworkers that want a compact saw for a pretty reasonable price, I think the Evolution fills that gap perfectly. If you're interested in purchasing one of these saws, we do have a 5% discount. It's code MDA5. We have that down in the description. You can go ahead to Evolution's website and pick one up. They ship out of Davenport, Iowa, right in the middle of the United States. That looks like that is where their US base is. Like I said, it's a company that's out of the United Kingdom. They're much bigger in, in Britain, but they are slowly making a presence in the United States. So that's all I really had to say about the saw. Of course, the vanity project will go on. Uh, I'm gonna finish that in another video. I'll probably do a whole nother dedicated video to finishing and assembly of the thing. And I'm looking forward to it. So thanks for joining me on another episode of Mason Dixon Acres. And I will see you next week.